The intent of this video is to discuss the function and usage of the B-17 Bomber's B-5 Drift Meter. The Bomber's Drift Meter instrument is located in the navigator's compartment and is used to measure both drift and ground speed. Drift occurs when the plane is flying in a crosswind. Drift, measured in degrees, is the angle difference between the true heading of the aircraft and the actual path of the aircraft. You may have seen this picture of the Memphis Bell crew members posing in front of their B-17 bomber. This small tube extending three inches out from the skin is a drift meter's deployed periscope optical head. The B-5 drift meter is a mechanical instrument. It is not powered. Its function is quite clever. The drift meter can either be located on the port side or starboard side of the B-17. The stowed drift meter is on the starboard side of the Commemorative Air Force's Sentimental Journey and the Museum of Flight's Boeing B. This view shows a drift meter in the stowed position. To deploy the drift meter, the navigator will remove the porthole cover. He will then slide the drift meter assembly along guide rail brackets such that the meter's periscope viewing tube extends 3 inches outside the fuselage. The drift meter consists of three parts. The center viewing eyepiece is part of the periscope. It is constructed of mirrors and prisms that allow the navigator to view the ground. For better viewing, the periscope is angled 15 degrees up from the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. There are etched lines in the optical head. There are 10 horizontal drift lines. The drift lines are used to estimate drift if moving quickly at a lower altitude. There are two vertical timing lines. The timing lines are used to determine the bomber's ground speed. A movable pointer is also in the optic head field of view. The navigator uses the pointer tip and the etched lines to measure drift. The right side of the instrument is a drift card. The drift card consists of a frosted glass panel over a circular grid of 15 parallel lines. The grid card can be rotated. The circular grid card is mechanically linked to the optical head's drift lines with a pentagraph linkage. The grid card lines and the optic head drift lines rotate together and always stay in parallel. The pencil is mechanically linked to the pointer in both the vertical and horizontal plane. The pencil and pointer are connected with a classic four bar linkage. The navigator scribes on the frosted glass with a pencil. The pencil marking is the track of the bomber. The pencil is stowed in the caddy when not in use. The navigator will read the bomber's drift from the drift scales in degrees. The left side of the instrument houses the ground speed calculator. The inputs are the duration an object traverses a timing line in seconds and the absolute altitude of the bomber. The absolute altitude is the distance from the bomber to the ground measured in feet. The output value will be the ground speed of the bomber in units of knots or miles per hour. Let's take a look at an example in finding both drift and ground speed with a show and tell drift meter display. The display consists of a B5 drift meter, stopwatch, laminated map of Manhattan, New York, and an adjustable map base. The map base allows for various drift angles and allow the map to slide along a guide rail simulating a flyover. A dot is placed over the Williamsburg Bridge for tracking. To find the bomber's drift, the navigator will inform the pilot to hold the bomber's airspeed, course, and altitude steady. He will deploy the B-5 drift meter into the slipstream. He will unstow the pencil and place it on the frosted glass. He will fix and track an object on the ground with the pointer. In this example, the drift meter's pointer is tracking the Williamsburg Bridge. He will be tracking the bridge with the pointer across the optical head spanning the field of view. The pencil will be scribing a visible line into the etched glass at the same time. He will take multiple ground object fixes. He will next rotate the circular grid card lines to become parallel with the pencil scribe lines. The crosswind drift can be read from the meter in degrees. A 20 degree plus drift was measured. Plus drift is drift to the right. Minus drift is drift to the left. He will erase the pencil markings with a damp cloth. To find the bomber's ground speed, the drift card will be set to the plane's drift angle, in this case 20 degrees to the right. This will adjust the timing lines to their proper settings. The navigator will time the duration of a fixed ground point spanning the timing lines. 
The time duration will be measured with a stopwatch. The duration will be measured in seconds. For this example, it took 38.8 seconds for the Williamsburg Bridge to span the drift meter timing lines. The 38.8 second duration plus the absolute altitude of the bomber will be input into the ground speed dial. Assuming the bomber was at an absolute altitude of 25,000 feet, the ground speed computer reads a ground speed of 220 miles per hour. The drift and ground speed data can be provided to the bombardier and pilot. Navigators were instructed to lock the pointer on texture or color variations when obtaining drift over the ocean or land devoid of features. B-29s and some B-17s adopted the more sophisticated B-3 drift meter. B-29s were pressurized, so their drift meters needed to be operated in the pressure vessel. This is the B-29's drift meter pressure port. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider either commenting, liking, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.